Hello folks and welcome to episode 8 of the ATFA Talking Wood podcast. My guest speaker today is a wonderful lady who started out on the tools as a contractor, has now moved into the manufacturing distributing side of the timber flooring industry with Fitties Australia. Welcome Melissa Wines to ATFA Talking Wood podcast. Hello, thank you for having me. No, it's great to have you here Melissa. I've been trying to get you on for a few weeks and trying to work it out. Um, finally our diaries aligned. Wonderful, looking forward to it. Fantastic. Did I say your surname right then, Wynas? Yes, yeah, Wynas, but it, Mel is sort of pretty much what I'm known for anyway, so yeah. So what, just just off the cuff, Wynas, is that from a particular area in the world? That's... Um, well, actually, my grandparents are Welsh and Scottish, oh, so fantastic. it's all originated from the UK, yeah. Beautiful. All right, Mel, just we'll start off today. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and how did you get into the timber flooring industry as a starting point? Okay, well, I'm currently the um, technical director at Fitties Australia. I've got a 21-year-old daughter and a 23-year-old daughter. Fantastic. Um, Previously, I started, I was actually a counsellor in the domestic violence sector um, and was doing that for quite a while. But at the time, my girls were quite young. They were in primary school ages. Yeah. And I kind of just felt like I needed to be a little bit more flexible, plus it was quite an intense industry to be involved in. Um, So felt like I needed a bit of a change. I had a friend that was actually helping out a floor sander a few days a week, Um, and she wasn't able to do it anymore, so she asked me if I would be prepared to do that. Um, And so I said, yeah, I'd be really interested to see what goes on. So... Um, got involved with him and he taught me yeah. um, all the different processes and how things go. Um, yeah. And then I pretty much, I, I then used to, I used to contract to a lot of the guys in the industry. So I was actually quite yeah. lucky because they were open to letting me come on site and learn the different ways that they do things and stuff like that. So, and the different products out there and um, yeah, so I was, got the opportunity to be exposed to quite a diverse uh, group of men. <laughs> That's an unbelievable story just in itself. So how old were you when you kind of went, did that change of career? Um, I would have been probably maybe, let's say, mid-30s. Or yeah, maybe right. Earlier, yeah. A huge sea change. <laughs> wow. It was a big risk, yeah, but... Um, yeah, it, I, I was really surprised how much I really enjoyed it, um, which was good. And I suppose my background as well um, was in the arts industry. So in terms of colours and staining, I really, really liked that. So yes, yes, at the time, sense. it was actually quite hard to – a lot of guys just did a lot of clear coats. So, yep. Um, yep. yeah, I really liked playing around in that sort of side of things as well. So. Yeah, it was an interesting couple of years. And then I started my own business, which was called Timber Care. Okay. Uh, and I had a group of other girls working for me on site too. Wow. So That's but incredible. At that cool. stage, I kind of realised that my forte was not sanding, so to speak. Yep. Um, one, I was really bad at it. Yep. And two, the equipment can be quite heavy with staircases and all that kind of stuff. So Yes, yeah, I understand. I was, yeah, I was really fortunate enough to come across through the industry with um, a couple of guys that would purely just step in and sand and prep everything for me. And then I could just come in and take over, whether it be with staining and coating and whatnot, and they'd move on oh. to the next job. And then we sort of rolled that out and it worked really, really well. So, yeah, that That's was fantastic. pretty much that. It's incredible. So, obviously, how was it being a female in, in a, a male-dominant industry as a contractor? Well, the, the main guys that I used to hang around with or work with, they were absolute gentlemen. So yeah, they yep. really did look after me and took me under their wing. Yeah. Um, so I was very fortunate in that regard. But then when I had my own business, I think it really worked to my advantage. Okay. Um, I was pretty expensive um, and I did have – a lot of work coming up ahead. Yep. But I think the main reason for that was because 
when you're dealing with the homeowner in that this high end niche market, um, the homeowner generally being the female one making the decisions of what she wants, yep. um, can um, really like dealing with another female. Um, yes. You know, they would say, I'd, I'd rather go with you because I feel comfortable handing my keys over. You know, we're going on our yacht for the week and yep. I, I don't have to worry about anything yeah, yes. like that. Um, I would explain the process right from start to finish and our timeline frames and yep. they would know exactly what was getting done every single day and I would check in with them. I think it was a refreshing customer service aspect that wasn't really around at the time. Yep, definitely. Um, so, yeah, it worked to my advantage that way. Yeah, yeah most definitely. And now you've moved on off the tours and you're with Fitties Australia. So how did, how did you get involved with the Fitties side of things? Okay, so um, the products that I was using, obviously specialising in staining and natural products and oils and waxes, the yep. products, either whether there was an issue with product supply or there was um, some of them I just felt were not up to scratch and I thought there must be something better out yep. there. So I actually came across Fitties um, in the UK through, I was on a Canadian woodworking online chat room thing that wow. Okay. I stumbled across and a lot of them were talking about their products. So I then, yeah, did a bit more research and located them. They, their online presence back then was bare minimum. So they were actually mm -hmm. really quite hard to track down. Um, but when I did, I asked for a sample and they sent that out to me and I mucked around for it. I did a floor it in my own home and kind yep. of felt like it was a little bit too good to be true. Yeah. Um, from what I could tell, and and then I actually got my kids to do their own bedroom floor with it because I wanted to see how easily it could be stuffed up because it was known as a DIY product. Okay. Um, and the dry time was exceptional, the durability and all the testing I did. So then I started ordering it from them to use on my own products, uh, my own projects. Yep. So um, it sort of just organically grew from that and they kept saying we don't have a distributor in Australasia would you like to be part of it being a single mum I did knock them back a few times because I said I can't do both and obviously we understand yes. what the market's like over here it's very different to over there um, I still need to work a full-time job and you know I've got staff and all that kind of stuff I can't just drop everything yes. um, but it, it a lot of the guys in the industry then started saying, well, next time you order some, can you get some for me? I've got these jobs coming up. And it just kind of grew from there. I got involved in the pre-finishing side of things with okay. the coatings over here as well. Um, and then I was telling Tracy about how all of this was going on. Her and I had yep. in mother's group, which is now oh, right. nearly 25 years ago, my God. Um, and she had a sales and marketing background. Um, yep. And I sort of said to her, I just don't know how I could even handle that side. Um, yes. I'm a hands-on kind of thing. So we spoke about what we would like it to look like if we went ahead and did that. So, um, yeah, we both thought that let's give it a crack. So it's kind of jumped off the cliff from that regard. Um, yeah. And we both continue to work at our full-time jobs for a, probably maybe about eight months and things started um, really kicking along really well. So we then got to the point where we had to make that break and decide yep. that we needed to do that. So instead of us working out of our garages, we went on the hunt for a warehouse. Um, we needed to get a car and all of that stuff. Yep. Um, but a lot of my customers at the time would still contacting me, but, you know, architects and builders for projects. Yes. So I did get her involved in the tools so that we, you know, needed a bit of the whole cash flow yep. thing. Um, and it was gave her a good understanding of what actually happens out there on site as well. So, um, cool. yeah, so. It, That's fantastic. Uh, so, um did you sell your business or did you just shut your con your contracting business down when you went to Fitties? How did that work? I I 
um, I, well, I, I didn't sell it, no. It sort of just yeah. was, well, I took on projects here and there. Just finished it up. And then yeah. as time went on, I would then refer them to, you know, other contractors other that I knew that yeah, yeah. would be able to help them out. Yeah. So, um, but on the other hand, the good thing about that was that it was um, really good for me to, so when we did start, um, we just start, started with the basic, just the hard wax oil. Um, and the UK have got hundreds of products that they sell. Yes. So then I would sort of do get some more samples of, say, uh, one of their stains, um, yep. the tinted wax. Um, and I did need access to on-site real-life real projects um, for me to experiment around. So it was yeah, great to have that contact where I can go, if you've got a job coming up, can I come and can we muck around? Can we, put, you know, yep. what's the worst thing that can go wrong? We stand That's it right. up. <laughs> um, and start again. Exactly and right. You yell at me, yeah. but um, yeah. So so that was really good. So it, we were quite basic in the start in terms of our range. Yes. So um. So yeah. that kind of leads me into the next kind of question. So w tell the tell the listeners where did fitties originate from, and is it used worldwide? Yeah. So uh, they are a, a four generation uh, company. Okay. Um, so they've been around for like say 130 years um, and they started off in the paint industry and they're in Cardiff in Wales. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So, and actually the little boy on the tin, yep. his name's Jules and he's the fifth generation. Um, right. He's actually cool. 19. So he's at university yeah. <laughs> doing business study. Um yeah, right. Yeah, he's been over here a couple of times and he might down the track actually come and spend quite a few months and do some work experience with us as well. That's unbelievable. That's awesome. And so the products used worldwide around you know, South America, mm -hmm. North, North America, Africa? Yep. Um, there's a Fitties USA distributor, um, yep. Denmark, Vietnam, yeah, everywhere. Like I said, we were pretty much the only area that they weren't um involved Loving. back then so yeah, yeah okay and so when when you decide to kind of bring it out to australia how long ago are we talking and is it over in um nz as well now yeah so we well i was bringing it in for my own use obviously way back yep. to, say maybe 10 years ago or whatever okay we right. started in terms of fitties australia uh 2015 um oh. was when we had it we moved into the warehouse 2016 um, and yep. Handley's are our distributor over in New Zealand. Um, and, and they've had it for about three years over there now. Hard wax oil is something that they don't have as part of their, their range. Um, so we right. were more than happy to partner with them um, and share it across the ditch, as they say. Yeah, okay. And um, so Lee's been, so Fitties are obviously such an old company. Has their coding technologies changed over time? And, you know, are they putting new products out there and making improvements being such an old company? Yeah, look, um, they're a wonderful company to deal with. Yeah, they, they do reinvest in their technology to keep up to date. Right. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the, the people that work there um have been there for four, over 40 years. Like one of the chemists has been there for over 50 years. Wow. Um, so they're a very family orientated business. And um, the good thing is about that is that when we, whether he comes over there or we go over there, I can present to them ideas or products that are missing from our market that they don't currently stock. Yeah. And the chemists will analyze things and have a look at it and develop yeah. Um, something suitable for our market. So in terms of our stains, there's colours in there in the range that they never had, which I came up with sort of the formula for and they manufactured that. Um, the decking oil is sort of, it's not new to us over here because we have had it for a couple of years doing testing and stuff, but yep. obviously it's not a big market for them over there. Yeah. Um, so being able to work and tweak anything that I say you know, the tinted hard wax oil was a good one, for example, because when you use that, it can look like paint. Um, yes. But I wanted to be able to buff it in. So they tweaked the formula of the colours so great. that it gave it more working time. So it's 
it's fantastic to work with a company that can be so flexible. Yeah. Um, and yeah. we for each other. They learn things from us as well. Yep. Vice versa. Um, so yeah, it's great. That's great. That's great to hear that the manufacturer, you know, they're taking, you know, advice on, I guess, from obviously different climate, you know, different timbers, and you know, they're willing to obviously move with the times. Thanks to Eurothane Coatings for sponsoring the podcast series. At Urethane Coatings, we are 100% Australian owned and manufactured. Oil-based, waterborne, and solvent-based floor and concrete coatings. Our flagship products in the monothane and water coat systems range reveal beautiful finishes each and every time. Urethane Coatings, really looking the goods. Urethane Coatings, for all your timber and concrete coating needs. Visit us at www.urethanecoatings.com.au for more details. Thanks to Urethane Coatings for sponsoring the podcast series. We know obviously, I know Fiddy's with their hard wax saws. What other products do they come with? Wow. We've actually got, um, so the last couple of years, is a whole different category, which is our uh, woodworking finishes. Oh, nice. So it's a whole separate brochure and it's yep. all the woodworking market. So, yep. you know, the wood turners, the carvers, all that kind of stuff. There's um, a lot of your traditional supreme waxes, which are based on, you know, the 300-year-old formula of, of buffing um so we've also diversed into the concrete market. So we've got a concrete finish as well. Um, nice. But yeah, we're sort of just adapting at times and growing with, with yep. you know, it, it's funny, a you lot train. of those woodworking shows because that wasn't really my background. I've, I've learned so much from exhibiting yep. at them from them and they'll say, oh, you don't happen to have a product that does blah, blah, blah. And I look into it and yep. I go, yeah, we do actually. We can order that in, so then yeah. that becomes added to the range as well. So yeah. that's just sort of diversifying. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's incredible. Cool. That's unbelievable. So, what what are the benefits of using hard wax oils, from your opinion? Well, I uh, know without sounding a little bit biased, um, I I love the fact. I love the look, the way it looks. I love the way that it's replenishable. You know, you can actually yeah. live on it, enjoy it without being precious with it, um, you know, not having to strip it right back to bare timber, as well as it being food safe. Um, yep. So you've got a whole different variety of it, not just flooring. You can yep. do chopping boards, bench tops, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you you can spot repair if you have got it on your floor yep. and you damage something. Um, it's just, yeah, a, a aesthetically looks yeah. beautiful and being replenishable yep. um, is a key benefit. Definitely, definitely. So some people obviously um, put the link it to being a high maintenance product and obviously needing to maintain by the book. You know, yeah. What's your view on that kind of side of things? From, is that like a, a bit of a Chinese whispers or is it a bit of truth? What, what's your opinion on that? I think we're probably, in my opinion, the only um, hard wax oil manufacturing company that doesn't require a hardener, okay. uh, doesn't require a maintenance program, doesn't need to be rebuffed, doesn't need to. Our formula is quite different to a lot of the other ones on the market is that our yep. clear product is purely roll or spray only. Um, right. It's impossible to burnish it. So anything that you can create that burnishing product with is not going to be anywhere near as durable or stain resistant yes. uh, as something like our hard wax oil. So yeah. we don't require a maintenance program. Obviously, we can't control so in a floor, yes. for example, of how they're yes. going to look after it. But the benefits are that, you know, if they just need to redo the kitchen in seven years' time, they can just tape off that section. They could... It, you know, more than likely be able to do it themselves and just put another top-up coat. Yes. Um, the only thing where, and it's not just our coating, there's many no. things out there, is that, um, you know, it all comes back to the correct cleaner, I think, more importantly. Um, 
And it wouldn't matter whether it was a water-based product yeah, or not. Correct. If correct. they're not doing that, that's the only thing in our book, as we say, that to use yep. the cleaner. No, good point. So at, at times we see some of the oil floors that are prone to staining, um, particularly in kitchen areas, obviously. Uh, yep. Hardwax oil finished floors, are they prone to staining in general? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. And I've um, obviously the first house that ever got done in Australia was my own floor. Yeah. Um, and I tried to do everything possible. I'd even pour like red wine and leave it yeah. overnight um, <laughs> and it would just wipe off. Was that, that deliberately wine. poured or accidentally? Yeah. <laughs> it happened <laughs> quite a few times. Let's just say. <laughs> so I got good test. It did get a lot of good testings. I did actually drop a whole roast lamb onto yeah, boiling right. hot onto the floor. Um, yeah, there was nothing that I could come across um, other than nail polish remover that did any damage whatsoever. So, um, yeah, it's was its durability is very exceptional. That's for That's sure. Excellent. So, what what would be your advice on managing clients' expectations regarding coatings in general? Look, I think it's important to give them options. Yeah. Um, a hard wax oil is not for every everyone, but a, a solvent's not for everyone either. No. Um, exactly right. And I think it all comes down to educating, you know, giving them options. They go, Correct. no, I don't want anything that's solvent based. Okay, well, let's look at yep. water or wax, you know. Um, yeah. And it's hard because when people live on have had different types of floors in the past they do have some unrealistic unrealistic expectations too so yeah. i think it's important that the client is educated of um what they are to expect uh down down the track but exactly. that obviously i like them to throw in there that the benefits are they're never going to have to move out of their house ever again and get the floor re-sanded because they've got that added option of, of just doing spot repairs over time yeah. or yeah. room by room basis so um totally yeah right. uh, excellent so um mel here's a question maybe back from when you were a contractor when did you first hear about the atfa and then why, why did you guys decide to get involved well, I first um, heard about the ATFA because Tate's uh, were a very yes. um, big supporter of mine in terms of um, recommendation. And it, when you're on the tools, we're talking? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, they would give my card out to people. So they were generally were the ones that hosted the ATFA nights. Yep. So I found it really um interesting that there was something like a trade night where you can be exposed to other brands um mingle with other contractors you know all that kind of stuff listen yep. to the speakers and and hopefully learn something from it so when we started um you know getting into the distribution it it, it made sense for us to be a member of the atfa so that we could be part of that as well yep. and get more exposure across the country. Fantastic. So I love all the little informations. I mean, I know things have changed since yep. I was part of the ATFA, but the webinars and um, the you training know, side of it. sheets and all of that as a reference um, that you go, oh, hang on, I can quickly look that up and find yes. out what, what the regulations are or whatnot, whereas yep. sort of you're scratching your head at times. And, and as you know, as a contractor, it can be a very lonely industry too if you're on your own, you know, working 360 days a year without a colleague to talk to. And sometimes yeah. you just need some advice, you know. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. another reason as well. Yeah, yeah, cool. So how much has the timber flooring industry changed in your time you've been in the industry? Um, Quite a lot. I've seen. So. Yeah. I suppose over that time, I've you know, it, it, all this engineered pre-finished stuff entered the market. Then yeah. That was like, you know, the flavour of the month and then yep. the coatings weren't really surviving on them. There was a lot of issues after install. I think it made me feel a little bit threatened and nervous that all these Definitely. pre finished floors were going in. Um, yep. But then having um, access to the fitties range of products, I was able to actually step in and fix a lot of these floors um with the product range so i picked up a lot of work out of it but okay. there was that phase that went through there's it was interesting the different different parts of of melbourne um 
or Victoria, you know, they one area would like solid floors, others like engineered, like yep. and things all change. Um, it was great to see that, no offence to any of the solvent people yep. out there, but um, that that for a lot of reasons, uh, more coming down to health and usage of the contractor, um, yep. applying the product is sort of, you know, phasing out. Um, yep. Then you've got these LED things that pop out and, you know, all sorts of new technology, which is, is changing everything. But I sort of say, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. So. Uh, very well put. So obviously we've been through some hard times over the last couple of years um, in, the, in the industry as manufacturers, even as associations. How's kind of COVID-19 affected you guys? Um, we hear a lot of difficulties about supply, um, large costs increase, and obviously getting products into the country. Have you guys been affected with all this? Oh, massively, hugely. Yeah. First of all, um, in a positive way, um, our DIY market and our online web store, which is pretty much the intention was so people could purchase some cleaner or if they were regional, get it, you know, get yep. it sent to the house. It was yep. uh, um, got so much traction. Um, so um, that went sort of through the roof over quite a period of time. Yep. Um, and we've got a lot of repeat sales now from that. So that's been interesting to watch how that grows. Um, the freak out thing was was raw ingredients was a bit of a panic panic. Um, again, with our close relationship that we have with the UK, um, we they would say, look, I know you've just placed another order, but let's let's look ahead. Yeah. You know, we had they would make us a priority with their manufacturing. Um, I'd like to think that they that we are their favourites. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So so. Obviously, the access to the ingredients, their production time slowed down very slightly, um, didn't really affect us. The shipping cost, now that's tripled. Um, prices of tins, yeah. Um, yeah, of all course. the little bits and pieces that you don't even think about yeah. it that are in the background. Um, you're just like, whoa. And then, then when you look at the product when it's been delivered and you go, we used to pay this much yeah. for it. It's, now I'm costing this much. So Same products jumped. Yeah. Yeah. So um and you know it's no it's just the way the world is, but it is. So from a distributor point of view, you don't want to be <clears throat> passing on these astronomical price increases no. um off the bat when everyone's trying to recover. So it's no. um yeah, yeah, there's been so many things that I just would not never have even dreamt about, you know, three years ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it was huge. No, that's right. And and I guess to the contractors listening, you know, um, you know, it's it's no one's fault. It's as you said, it's the way the world's gone now. They just need to put up their prices, you know, exactly. to, get, to make their same profit margins because and the homeowner will pay it, you know what I mean? And just make sure the work, the quality's there. Um, and you know, you're quoting the right the right amount and mm -hmm. you're you're making your due diligence financial out of it. Um yeah. you know, it's just got to pass the buck on. Exactly. Exactly. So Oh, Mel, you've been great today. I've just got one last question for you. What is your biggest concern for the timber flooring industry and the coating industry do you see in the near future? Well, what I would think? like to see, um, I suppose in terms of a concern moving forward, I think I would like to see a bit more of the, say we're talking flooring, so the contractors yep. um, educating the home owner about aftercare. You know, like we're not the only company that has the door hangers with the care and maintenance on them. I yep. don't know for the life of me why they don't leave them at every job site. Mm -hmm. It saves the owner hassling them and then they're calling me and then, you know, it all just goes around in circles. Um, yep. We've also got a range of floor protection that we import from America, which is high-grade commercial quality. Um, I think it's important that they take it that one step further and say, look, on your chairs, this is recommended. This is, you know, on the, you know, wash the floor with this. I know you yeah. like to use eucalyptus oil, but that's going to end in tears. Yeah. And I think that in terms of even from a litigation point of view, that yeah. even if they take a photo or they've got it in their quote that this is what we recommend and I've left a bottle of cleaner, if they've got cleaners that come in and use something they wouldn't even know of and then all of a sudden, 
they're starting to have issues. It doesn't come back to them as negligence that the most common thing I hear is, well, nobody told me. Um, Very true. So I would like to see them step up and, and take that on board a little bit more in terms of how serious it is, because I've seen, you know, I yeah. know Brett wrote an article about chemicals yep. and chemical attack and the freak out of germs all of a sudden is, I'm going to see that that's going to, you know, there's going to be years of repercussions of that down the track. But I do feel for the contractor that gets caught up in that. Um, yeah, yeah. And it, it's only a very simple thing for them to do. No, that's right. And, you know, you can buy these in bulk. You know, they're just they're just adding that little bit of professionalism to your business. And, you know, just, just don't rush out the door. Just go through a few things with them before you get to that next job because it can save you that callback in the future. Oh, 100%. Fantastic. Mel, I want to thank you for your giving up your time. It's an incredible story. It's definitely not finished in the timber flooring industry. And I know our members today will love listening to you and what you've um, brought to the industry. So thanks for giving up your time. Thanks for having me, Josh. All right. I hope you all enjoyed today's ATFA podcast, guys. We'll have a new one coming to you very soon. So please, for the time being, stay safe. And a final word from our sponsor. Urethane Coatings. For all your timber and concrete coating needs, visit us at www.urethanecoatings.com.au for more details.